we've had. Uh, the market's really bombarded with results uh, this week. And looking by the kind of performance that's coming through, it seems that the market largely optimistic about the road ahead and what these results have revealed. Absolutely, Alicia. Um, what we've seen in the market, we've seen um, uh, the banks, some banks really strong uh, results. Uh, we've also seen some release uh, not so positive results. However, we can attribute a large portion of this to the um, elections and preparations for the elections. Uh, majority of our investors or, or majority of the uh, companies did say that um, uh, they saw a lull in demand for their products and services and as a result that reflected in uh, the earnings um, that, w that were released um, for uh, Q1 of 2011. Taking a look at the earnings season as a whole and specifically pertaining to the banking sector, are you confident about the road ahead on that end? Absolutely, I'm confident about the uh, road ahead. I believe um, that going forward um, we will see increased uh, loan growth and that um, has been seen from the end of the uh, from Q1 results that we have seen so far. Um, in previously last year we saw loan growth about five or six percent. Uh, this year we're seeing loan growth ranging between nine percent and twelve percent uh, in some banks. Uh, with that in mind we believe that uh, banks can um, earn higher um, income and obviously that would uh, translate into better earnings. Let's take a look at uh, the implications of rising commodity prices on uh, players within the fast-moving consumer goods space because this is certainly coming to bear. And I'm going to choose uh, someone like a Dangoti uh, Sugar, a company like that, to illustrate the kind of effects we're seeing because it's because of rising raw material costs on that end that we're seeing earnings coming under pressure there. What's your view of a player like Dangoti Sugar? Um, Dangote Sugar actually had a um, uh, better uh, top line, though in line with our expectations, um, the top line grew by 4%. Um, however, we also saw rising input costs as well. Things like cost of uh, raw sugar, for example, um, affecting the bottom line. The bottom line fell by 18%. Um, we do expect uh, that going forward, um, inflation uh, due to um, rising commodity prices should ease. Um, however, um, we think that companies like um, Dangote Sugar really will be affected by the ability to pass on costs mm -hmm. to, to their end consumers and the business model that they choose to pursue. Obviously, when you contrast this with uh, the likes of Dangote Flour, uh, where the, the ability to pass on um, inflationary pressures is easier because the end consumers are retail clients, um, they have actually fared better than Dangote Sugar. Also, um, for uh, that reason, you yeah. have Dangote Sugar trading at 16 times earnings, whilst uh, Dangote Flour is trading at uh, 8 times earnings. Hence, we would um, buy uh, Dangote Flour today. However, we would uh, put a hold recommendation on Dangote Sugar. Of course, uh, now that you've touched on uh, Dangote Flour, let's take a look at that space because it is also a very competitive space. We've got uh, flour mills, for example, uh, riding on the same kind of fundamentals and the same kind of dynamic and operating environment, uh, but also moving further in that uh, we do have some diversification coming to the fore in that business. Mm. So looking at it uh, relative to peers, how would you rate a Dangote Flour against flour mills? Um, I think in, the, in a sector, in the consumer, fast-moving consumer goods sector, Dangote flour and flour mills actually are uh, the cheapest in the sector. Um, Dangote flour is trading at around eight times earnings and flour mills at around ten times earnings. Don't forget that flour mills also uh, produces other things apart from um, uh, uh, f uh, apart from uh, flour milling. Mm -hmm. um, for that reason, we would choose those two stocks compared to others who are trading um, at maybe 16 times earnings or the industry average around um, 15 times earnings. Well, we've just touched on some of your favorites within uh, the fast-moving consumer goods space. Let's uh, look at a player like UAC out with full year and Q1 numbers this week. What did you make of that overall impressions of the company at this stage? We were actually surprised but with the results of UACN. Um, obviously, UACN is a conglomerate uh, uh, comprising of 
CAP, um, UAC and Properties, as uh, as well as the uh, restaurant business, um, the, the food business really. Um, we saw that the food business didn't do quite as well um, compared to historical figures. Um, the food business usually is one of the strongest, stronger performers um, in the industry. However, we did see a strong attribution um, from the properties business, which indicates that Nigeria uh, is actually on the path to economic recovery uh, because the company typically focuses on the high-end property development segment and for them to have turned 18 percent earnings um, um, you would think that uh, it means that uh, um, the, the, the economy is actually uh, is actually better um, as well as um, CAPL as well uh, driven by infrastructural demand and and real estate development as well um, we've seen strong, strong performances in those two companies. Um, however, the, the, the uh, food business hasn't done so well. We suspect that that was driven by um, the political yeah. environment. As you know, um, some Saturdays uh, were, were shut down because of elections. Um, and as a result, the, the shops just couldn't be opened. Um, for that reason, uh, we think the, the demand for products um, for the restaurant business was actually quite low.